So we're talking about viruses today, and we're going to look at some types of viruses. So here's HIV. Uh, you've got your RNA inside and your protein coat, um, which is the caps on the capsid, and then you've got um, a lipid layer on the outside. Here's Ebola, it's actually a really big virus. Here's a herpes virus, and this is what it ends up looking like um, when it erupts in your face. And here's an adenovirus, which is a common cold. Influenza virus. Remember, there are lots and lots of different types of um, flu viruses, lots and lots of different types of cold viruses. Um, papillomavirus causes warts. And then here's a bacteriophage, which is really important because we're going to be talking about it um, when we do a, a unit on DNA. And so this one is kind of an important one. So here's the DNA, um, and this whole thing is a protein coat. And it infects bacteria, as its name suggests. So here's a bacterium, and here's um, some viruses. And you can see the, the DNA is colored here, um, in this case green, I guess. And it's, it's like a hypodermic needle. It, this thing squishes down, and it injects. Um, the DNA inside, and so you can see the pins here, and that's what um, helps to get the DNA inside the, um, the the bacterial cell. So here's a video of it, which isn't going to work for you, but anyway, these are viruses that attack bacteria, and so you can see them attaching to the bacteria here and injecting the DNA inside. So a virus that attacks bacteria is called a bacteriophage or phage, or if you want to just call it a phage, that's fine. A lot of people say phage. So there it is. There's a um, picture of it with an electron micrograph, which is a kind of an amazing shot, I think. T phages are a specific class of bacteriophages that look like this. And so again, it's got its DNA, and then it's got the protein around it. You don't have to memorize any of the parts of it. Um, just remember that it looks like a needle. I think it does anyway. And here's what E. coli looks like. So T4 phages infect E. coli, which is a type of um, bacterium. And it's found in the intestines, so it's an intestinal bacterium. So everyone has E. coli in them. There are some strains of E. coli that are pathogenic that can hurt you. Um, so that's one reason to boil water if you're not sure um, whether it's clean or not. If you find E. coli in your drinking water, let's say um, the government comes and tests your drinking water and they find E. coli in it, that means it's an indicator organism. That means that it's very likely that that water was contaminated with poop from either people or cows or something. So there are six small spikes um, at the base of this contractile sheath that are used to attach to the host cell. These things are kind of sinister looking because <laughs> they are. Um, and then they inject the viral DNA into the cell. And then there are um, two different types of bacteriophage replication. There's the lytic cycle and the lysogenic cycle. And so the, well, let's go backwards for a second. Um, either the, the virus can go into either one of these cycles, and if it goes into this one, then it can come out later and go into this one. So let's look at each of them. First, we'll look at the lytic cycle. Um, lysis means to burst. So the first thing they do is attach to the cell. And there, the virus is attached to the cell. Here is, this is a bacterium. And so it has one chromosome that's circular. And here's the DNA that's in the virus. So you can label that the bacterium and that the bacterial chromosome, which means it's one DNA strand. And that's the virus. So the next thing that happens is it injects the viral DNA or RNA. Um, in this case, it's DNA. So there it goes. And I don't know if this is going to come out on the screen capture, but it's showing the DNA um, going right into the host cell. So then the next thing that happens is that replication happens. So replication of new viral proteins and nucleic acids. So this can only happen in the host cell because you actually need um, all the nucleic acids and the proteins, the amino acids, um, you need some enzymes that are only found in the bacteria, not in the virus. So here, the, remember how we said viruses don't grow, they assemble? So the viral DNA is telling the bacterial cell, it's directing the bacterial cell to make a whole bunch more viruses. So more viral DNA enclosed with um, this protein and then the other pieces will get assembled on. 
And then, um, so you have the assembly of the new viruses. So you have this part that attaches to that part. It's kind of like putting Legos together. This goes with this, blah, 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 blah. And here you have the assembled new um, virus. And so you're going to make lots and lots of viruses. Um, when one virus infects a cell, you're going to make many, 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 many um, new viruses. And then, bummer, here we go, the release of the new viruses into the environment. So they break open or lice the bacterial cell when um, viral replication is finished. So this lytic cycle ends in cell death for the bacterium. And so I'm not sure if this video will work, but you're injecting the DNA in here. Then the DNA um, replicates, and it, it uses the host's enzymes and stuff, or maybe one of its own enzymes to replicate and then to make all the proteins that it needs and then they all get assembled and then they um, are released from the cell when the cell explodes. What a bummer, huh? Lysogenic cycle is a quieter one, at least for a while. So some viruses have the ability to become dormant inside the cell. That's called the, la the latent viruses. So not all viruses do that, but the ones that do can kind of um, go into the cell and just lie quiet for a while. So they remain inactive or dormant means the same thing. Dormant means inactive for long periods of time. Later they activate to produce new viruses in response to some signal. So here's the DNA going in and instead of replicating it's actually going to insert itself inside um, the viral chromosome. So viral DNA is injected into the host cell. The viral DNA joins the host DNA, forming um, a prophage. And so let's take a look at that. So here you have, let's see, um, here you have the virus that came in. This part is now the viral DNA that's been injected, but now it's part of the bacterial chromosome. So this green part is bacterial chromosome. And of course, chromosome means DNA. Prophage, that's this part here, and that means the virus DNA. And so what happens is it just lays low, it doesn't do much. And so when the cell division occurs, now you have two new um, cells that both have the virus. So you can end up having lots and lots of viruses replicated just because the bacterial cell is replicating. So the viral DNA may stay inactive in the host cell for long periods of time. The prophage is replicated during each binary fission. So we haven't talked about binary fission yet, but that means replication. That's what's happening right here. It's replication in a bacterial cell or a, a prokaryote. Over time, many cells form containing the prophages. And so hopefully this video will come out. Here you have, this will be hopefully better than the last one. So here you have the viral DNA, and it's going to get injected into the host cell. So when an activation... Okay, hopefully this whole thing will play. It has to have the right receptors, and then it's going to inject its DNA. And there it goes, injecting its DNA. And then that DNA is going to actually um, go right into the, the host chromosome. So here it is. It inserts itself in, and now you have the prophage and the whole entire chromosome. So when an activation signal occurs, the phage DNA starts to replicate. So the, did you see that just come out? Um, that's what would happen. So once a prophage cell is activated, the host cell enters the lytic cycle, and we're back to that other one where the cell just makes a ton of viruses and the cell dies. Bummer. So new viruses form and the cell lyses and bursts. Okay, so here's the picture of the whole thing. So we've got, let's see, right here, number one, that's when the virus is injecting its DNA. And so it might go into the lytic cycle, that's this one right here. And so here's the bacterial chromosome and here's the viral chromosome. The viral chromosome says, okay, I'll make a bunch more of me. And so it does, it makes a bunch more viruses like itself, and then it breaks the cell and all the viruses go off to infect something else. Or instead of that, when the viral DNA gets injected inside, it actually can sometimes become part of the bacterial chromosome, 
as a prophage or a prophage, and then the bacterial cell can reproduce. Um, it's called binary fission. And so it reproduces, and you can see this, many cell divisions. It can actually divide and divide and divide. You can have a ton of, vir of bacterial cells like this that all have that virus in them. Anyway, at some point, by some signal, um, the viral DNA can come out. Here it is, and it can go right into the lytic cycle. When a virus infects the cell and starts producing more viruses right away, what cycle is it? And that's the lytic cycle. When, virus, when a virus infects a cell and inserts its DNA into the host DNA, what is that viral DNA called? That viral DNA superphage, prophage, lagphage, latent phage. It's called a prophage or prophage. Which cycle is represented here? So you have the DNA going inside the chromosome of the bacterium. So that's the lysogenic one. So it's B lysogenic. Okay, latency and viruses that attack eukaryotes. Um, I think we'll pause here.